Hello, this is Pastor Fox, and I just wanted to bring you a word today to encourage you. But I'm going to start off with something that might not seem all that encouraging. You know, we read oftentimes that uh, wonderful scripture in Jeremiah 29, 11. My wife, it's one of her favorite scriptures, and, and I love it too. And it tells us, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Uh, we see that on plaques. Uh, people send it on cards. And it is indeed a wonderful verse. But if we take it out of context, uh, we're really not doing it justice. You've got to remember what's taking place there. And if you'll back up into verse 10, you usually won't see this part on any card or plaque. It says, For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon. This, the people have been taken into Babylonian captivity. That's what's going on. That's why Jeremiah is writing to them. He says, Then I will visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. He's saying, I've got a wonderful future for you, but it's not yet. It's 70 years from now. And in the meantime, there's some things that you need to know and you need to practice. I preached on this a number of months ago. And today, as we look at the things that are taking place in our nation, I just wanted to come back to this and remind us that we're not the first ones who've been in periods of anxiety and fear and anxiousness. And we're not the only ones that have been in periods of time where we maybe feel like you know, everything that we're familiar with or trust in has just sort of been ripped away. Uh, Jeremiah, as he's writing to these exiles, these are people who've been carried away into Babylonian captivity. And I want to mention this right off the bat. The reason this had happened was because they had disobeyed God so long that God finally said, enough, I'm going to discipline you. And the discipline was not to just punish them and hurt them, but it was to bring them back to himself. And that's what the book of Hebrews tells us about God's discipline in chapter 12 of Hebrews, that the Lord disciplines those he loves. In the midst of their discipline, what was taking place was that they found themselves having uh, been taken away from so many things that they trusted in, their, their framework, their life of worship, their, uh, their community, their, their homeland had been taken away. They'd been, their economy, uh, everything they trusted in, their property, and even taken away from many of their family members. But as I studied this in seminary, one of the things that was interesting me, in, to me to learn is that the group that were taken into Babylonian captivity for 70 years actually stayed closer to the true Jewish faith than those that were left behind. That's pretty interesting. The ones that were left behind mingled in with all these other pagan religions, intermarried, and, and compromised on their beliefs. But the ones that were in that, that place of testing and trial, uh, they actually drew closer to God and became more pure in their faith. A couple of things that I just want to share with you today. In the midst of all the things that may be causing you anxiety and fear and frustration and that sense of loss that those that had been uh, taken captive uh, into Babylon felt, uh, we need to choose, number one, to just continue to glorify God right where we are. We talked about this a few months ago, but I just feel led to kind of review it with you today. He says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, uh, the God of Israel, to all the exiles, and remember that 1 Peter tells us that we as believers in whatever generation we live in, we're to live as exiles because this is not truly our final home. And he goes on to say, uh, build houses, live in them, plant gardens, and eat their produce. Uh, that's uh, verses 4 and 5 of Jeremiah 29. Basically what he's saying to us there is that in the situation you're in, no matter how bad it gets, choose to glorify God. Don't lose sight of the mission that you have. You know, Paul and Silas uh, in, in prison sang praises to God in the Philippian jail. God responded to their faith and their praises and shook the jail and the chains fell off, the doors opened, but God told them not to leave. And the Philippian jailer was about to kill himself in suicide and they said, don't do that. And then when they realized they were there, then he was open to the gospel. He received Jesus Christ as his Savior and he and his family were baptized. And you know what? If we go through some hard things in this nation, in our community, won't it be worth it if uh, some people come to know Christ? Because that's eternal. The things we're facing right now, as hard as they may be, they're not eternal. And so we can thank God for that. And we, think, we also I just want to remind you that we need to really make a focus on investing in the next generation of believers. 
Uh, you know, sometimes it's easy to sit back and say, well, you know, uh, if we wouldn't be in this situation if the school educational system in America had done a better job. Uh, many years ago, they took prayer out of schools, they quit teaching uh, proper civics, and they no longer taught about the Christian foundations of this nation, uh, the ethical principles that this nation was founded on. Uh, we have people that are putting forth socialist ideas and all that kind of stuff in the educational system. All that stuff's true. But I want to remind you that uh, we can't just blame the educational system for that because Deuteronomy chapter 6 says the responsibility to raise up a godly generation is not on the educational system of the society, but on us. I remind you that Daniel, who was taken into uh, captivity, uh, that he and his three Hebrew children, his friends, uh, they were raised up uh, under that evil system, and yet they stayed true to God. And somebody had poured into their life. And we're called to pour into our children's lives and to help them know how to navigate this stuff. And it's more and more important right now than ever before, I believe, in our nation that parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, pour into discipling the next generation of believers. It's interesting, too, that he tells us, you know, go ahead and have uh, children. And there's some people that say, well, I don't want to have children in this wicked world that we're in today. Well, there have always been periods of time where godly, wonderful people were born in those situations. And I think uh, in faith, we can choose to trust God and even have children if that's the stage of life that, that you're in right now. And he says, you know, and multiply there. God meant for them not to uh, decrease, but increase, even in the midst of adversity and persecution, in preparation for the day when he would take them back uh, to their homeland and to Jerusalem. Are you pouring into your children right now in the midst of this time? It's more important than ever that you do that. And I would say even the uh, moms and dads that may be kind of frustrated right now, and I, hey, I get that, uh, with your kids at home doing uh, online school and maybe you have to be there with them or grandma and granddad, it's tough. But, you know, it may also give you an opportunity to spend some more time with them and to pour into their lives and maybe counter some things they're hearing that are not right. Uh, that you wouldn't have had had they wouldn't had they not been doing online school. So um, just encouraging you to have hope in the situation that we're in and look to God. And then the last thing in this is that uh, I told you as we shared about this a few months back is that God told them to seek the welfare of the city that they were in and in doing so they would be seeking their own welfare. And that no matter what happens, that uh, we should, instead of just getting angry and mad and, and uh, whatever, you know, rioting or whatever, that's not what God wants us to do, but uh, we should seek the welfare of our town and our community and our state and our nation, uh, our neighborhoods, of our workplace, and to do what we can to be a light for Christ in those situations. So uh, this has been Pastor Fox just sharing a few thoughts with you today. Uh, as we look at a lot of the craziness in the world today, God is still in control. Uh, we love you. We're praying for you. And I pray that God blesses you with a great week.